welcome back to the channel welcome back to the vlog now today i was supposed to be heading off on my first trip with my new van with my good buddy dermot up to Atle island unfortunately due to unforeseen circumstances dermot couldn't go so i didn't want to waste the window that i had to come and take some photographs so i said i'd go off on a road trip a mini road trip of sorts on my own and i've come to an area that i've come to quite regularly actually which is the Copper Coast in Waterford. It's a fantastic location for photography. So I'm really happy now to be here with my van. I also, another reason as well for coming here is because I noticed I was missing a couple of images to complete my location guide for this exact area, which is the Copper Coast. So I said, I'll come down, kill two birds, one stone, come in the van, get some images of the areas that I am missing and that I want to be able to complete the individual locations. And because I'm now in the van, I've started to really kind of make it my own. So I have a fridge installed here, which is great because that will keep all of my food nice and fresh. Uh, I've got blankets and everything else now as well for my bed. So it's really going to be a inaugural trip for my camper van. I'm going to make myself a quick sandwich as well here now, a quick bite to eat. And then I'm gonna go look around and take a couple of shots as well then uh, to complete the location guide for my website. So yeah, no ackle, but we're gonna have the Copper Coast instead. That certainly was a lovely feed. I think the ability to be able to cook on the fly, even though it was just a toasted ham and cheese sandwich and a nice cup of tea, but I think the ability to have those on the fly to get a nice warm meal is going to be really, really beneficial. It's actually getting quite cold where I am at the moment because I'm in the shade. So I was glad to have my cup of tea in my cup that I normally would use anyway for uh, uh, gifts from home. But yeah, really, really uh, nice. I used a couple of different types of uh, pieces of equipment as well by a company called Ridge Monkey. And there's really, really interesting that you can cook on both sides by flipping it over. And then there's a pot as well, which I use to boil my water. Now I had the lid off that, it took longer when I put the lid on, it went very, very quick. But yeah, really, really nice to be able to have that. I can take it with me as well, so I can have a nice warm drink when I get back from a shoot. Right, so I'm all changed now, ready to go on my photo shoot here in Ballydouane. And one thing I noticed actually here is my parking position wasn't optimal. There was a, there is a quite a considerable slope. Now that's obviously comes with the territory because I'm sloping down towards the coast, but it made it difficult actually to balance the pans. Uh, and also as well now when I'm in the van here getting changed, everything wants to kind of go that way. So I won't end up uh, spending the night here anyway. I'll find a different location, which is going to be flatter for my sunrise location. But yeah, off we go now to catch some shots in this beautiful area on the Copper Coast.
now that I'm down at the beach, I'm not quite sure actually which direction I will go. If I go behind you, which is to the right of this cove, I get some beautiful stacks that are there. And then behind me here, there's one single solitary stack, but you can't even see it right now because there's no separation between that and the cliffside. Now, the sun right now is on me, but it's going to dip behind um, the cliff that's behind you as well there. So it's probably going to be no light coming down into this area. So I think what I'll do with the incoming tide is I'll head up to the this direction here and hopefully then I'll be able to find some nice water movement because even though the waves aren't relatively large, they are still going to be moving within those. So hopefully I'll be able to find something nice up here in the multitude of rocks and frame it up nicely then with the stacks. come up to actually is right up to the water line over on the right hand side of the cove and as you can see here behind me there's one large dominant stack now I've been here before when the water has been at this level and the tide is coming in as well so that's fortuitous because hopefully it'll come in far enough anyway by the time I get some nice light for a sunset that where I'm stood right now would be completely covered in water there's a number of stacks that are around here there's actually two behind you and you know I've come out so far to the water line they're actually not going to be in these frames but if it comes in I might end up retreating back far enough that they'll actually come into the frame as well also so what I'm going to do is I'm going to compose a shot anyway here play around and see what I can find I'll go handheld as well just be able to pick something out and when I find something then I'll check back in I'll give you a look at the composition that I have anyway for my first shot <laughs> Now, below me here is the area that I was stood in when I first introduced this area. And I got in with the camera and I was about to show you guys actually uh, the composition that I had framed up. And then the water came in on me. Actually got my backside wet as well because I was bending down in relation to it. But that composition that I had there now is totally gone. It can't be gotten again because the water now is not going to recede back out further and the detail that I was able to get here with framing the shot was actually quite interesting. So there's two little rocks that are down here. I got down quite low, but either of those either side of the frame and they're both pointing towards the main stack. And then all I had to do was wait for the right moment for a wave to come in. I shot it at half a second, which is my preferred time for seascapes. And that allows me to be able to capture some of the flow of the water as it breaks in towards me. Now there's also options as well here to get it as the wave goes back out and you get a nice leading line of the water then as it meanders back out to the sea but yeah it didn't I don't know if I got one of those but I definitely got a couple of nice shots in it of the waves breaking in but like I said look nonetheless here I couldn't be there now any further because um, that composition is going to be swamped so tide is coming in which is good and now I'm going to retreat back I'll try and find another composition now with the water as it continues to come in towards me but yeah first shot anyway I'll give you a look at it now and then we'll have a look over the other side here and see what else we can find.
Now, rather than get caught out again with the water coming in, I framed up a shot here now well in advance of the incoming tide. And what I've done is gone into portrait mode with this one singular stack that's still being lit actually nicely by the sun. But what I have in front of me is a bit of a rock pool, but also a number and sequence of rocks as well, that there is a nice bit of separation between them. And all I need now is the water, something like this now when it builds up a bit further to come in and break all around this rock here. That then is going to create nice separation, I think, within the image. And the settings that I'm probably going to end up at is around about half a second again, maybe one second. Um, but I'm just waiting now for the big waves to come through. And I said I'd catch this and just give you an idea of what the composition is anyway before I get beaten back by the water. It's already coming up around my ankles as it is right now, so I don't think it's going to be far from now. But it's a matter of just to, fingers crossed, hope I've pre-visualize what it actually is and when the water comes in it fills up those gaps for me. If it works I'll give you a look at the shot now. Now, I'm not quite sure actually if I managed to get that exact shot. As you can see here now, the water has come in and I got a couple of nice waves of right, but nothing as ferocious as what I needed to be able to break around that rock and fill that area. Maybe, but I'll look at the images now when I look at the uh, camera later on. But yeah, now we're coming up now, I think, to golden hour. So hopefully there'll be a nice bit of light in the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find my final composition now and hopefully I'll be able to find a spot that has some nice wave action because there are some nice waves actually that are coming through. Some of them were more powerful than others. I played around as well also by the way with some uh, different shutter speeds. I went from a half a second, I went for a one second, I went for a quarter of a second just to be able to see what I could do to capture the flow and the energy within that water and then framing it up like I would have said earlier on in a portrait orientation with this single solitary stack which is still getting a bit of light actually so the sun is still up over on the west but I'm not obviously seeing any of that here. Now that also gave me a challenge because with the brightness that's there and then the darker area here in shade I needed to have my uh, 0.9 ND grad on just to be able to control that sky and then allow me to be able to have a shutter speed that would at least not make that totally dark in the bottom of the foreground anyway. But yeah, show you the second uh, shot anyway now from here. And like I said, I'm going to look around here now, look at the water coming in and then see if I can time a spot to get a shot um, at sunset.
rather than battle with rocks and such like that and be forced back in, I've decided to come back out into the open and look at the bigger scene. And I've got my shot framed up pretty similar actually to the framing that you're in here. And my idea here is to wait for the waves to come into me here and then capture them as they flow back out. This beach is phenomenal for the angle that it's at. And what you get then is once the wave comes in, start your shot. Probably around maybe a second actually should be enough. And then you'll capture all of that streaking water going back out, which will lead your eyes directly into the frame. Now, with the two stacks that are over here on the right-hand side, and then the one stack that's over on the left-hand side, that's going to be a bit wider than what you have there at the moment, but it's still lovely nonetheless. Now, I'm going to catch shots as well as the wave comes in and as it breaks, because with that one second exposure, you'll get that water coming in then as well, straight into the frame. So, the light, it'll probably catch. So what I'll do now here is, I'll wait because it makes no difference if the water's coming into me here. All I'm being done, all I'm happening then is I'm being pushed back up the beach. So I'm not going to be moved away from my compositions like I was in the other areas here. But yeah, this I think would be a lovely end actually to this fantastic afternoon of photography in this beautiful location on the Copper Coast. If the sky catches, it will be great, but there's not much cloud that's there. There's a tiny bit of cloud. Uh, even looking at the back of the screen here, it looks like as if it's sensor dust because it's so small in the bigger picture of the frame. But when you get a wave like this now, and if this comes into me here, I catch my shot just as it reaches me, and then I get a lovely movement as well of that water coming in. So yeah, I'm gonna camp out anyway in this location, wait for hopefully the light, and then we'll see what types of shots I can get from there. Look ahead, the sea is calm, and I know we've been through a lot, but just wait. For better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails Hold on tight I can smell the shore, it's right in front of us if we just Hold on tight This vision that I saw is getting closer every dawn I do seem to be getting a nice bit of a glow actually on the horizon. I think the sun has just set actually now. And there's a bit of color on the distant clouds that are off in the horizon there, which is nice actually for this image. And what I've done is I've moved along here now, and maybe you can see them or not, is there are a bit of a few stones that are here, which are breaking up obviously all the sand that's on this beach. And what that's doing is when you get a wave like this, that's coming in and it breaks over it, it gives you a completely different flow of the water, not only as it comes in, but moreover when it actually goes back out because it runs faster over the sand and it gets broken up then by the rocks as it goes back out as well. A very good bit of advice as well when you're doing stuff like this is catch your tripod and stick it into the sand. So wait for a wave to come in so it all becomes soft and then push the legs of your tripod down into it. So what that does is that it gives you more stability. It'll also help you as well in regards to avoiding any shake if a wave is coming in around the legs of the tripod. But at the moment now, because the light is fading, I'm able to get up to a two second exposure. I'm at uh, F8 and my ISO is at 100. And for that, I think it's beautiful shots. Now, before the sunset as well, to your left, that whole headland is getting a lovely golden glow as well. Now, I mean, this area is called the Copper Coast and they definitely lit up a nice pink orange color. So I got a couple of shots as well of that with the waves as well breaking back around the cove. And then I took another couple of shots as well, pointing this direction, just to be able to see, could I get a couple of nice images from that as well, because before the light actually faded. But as you can see now, there's a beautiful light here at the moment. So I'm going to continue on here, wait for the last light anyway, and continue to grab some shots as those waves will come in. I'm probably around maybe 20 feet back from where I would have first started. So I'm glad 
that I came over here because it would have been too dark actually over in the area to the right hand side as well. So I'm going to finish up this episode. I hope you've enjoyed coming along on this different adventure with me, starting off with a bit of camping in the camper van, nice bit of lunch, and now here for sunset in the beautiful Ballyduan Cove. So if it's your first time on my channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, Schlange Fold. Sure.